Thanks very much. So um, thanks very much for coming this evening. I think um, we may have more people joining us, um, but part of the purpose of this webinar is to have a recording of um, information about the new West Local um, X91 Chew Valley Sprint. Um, so even if we don't get masses of people in the in the room, hopefully people will still be able to see um, this information later. So um, just to clarify that we've got um, a number of people who are part of this webinar this evening. Behind the scenes, we've got Lucy from Weka who is doing all the technical stuff. Um, we've got Phil and Elaine from the um, Chew Valley Sustainable Transport Group who are answering questions live uh, within the chat. So what we'd really like you to do is to put any questions you might have as soon as you have them into the chat um, and they will try and respond to what they can in, in the moment as it were. And then we will as a panel answer any other questions that haven't been answered in that way. Um, so just to introduce the, the people who are part of this webinar to you, my name is Jackie Head. Um, and I'm one of the people involved in the Chu Valley CIC Sustainable Transport uh, Partnership who have um, successfully won the bid to run the X91 Chu Valley Sprint, the new West Local Service. Um, we've also got Avril England from uh, the West of England Mayoral Combined Authority. Um, we've got Jessica Fox Taylor from Bath and Northeast Somerset. Um, She's the team leader for sustainable transport. And we've got Simon Newport, who is the head of commercial at Transpora Group. Transpora being the bus company that will run the service. So we're gonna um, go through a number of talks to start with. As I said, do answer questions, put them in the Q&A rather than in the chat. And if you'd like to put in the chat um, where you're from, that would be lovely. And we have a sense of, of who's watching tonight. OK. Let's move on through the presentation. So as you'll be aware, this new service, it's, a, it's a, got a very simple aim, really, which is to go once a day into Bristol from the Chew Valley, uh, Monday to Friday, except bank holidays. We designed it because what was clear was that commuters were not getting what they needed from the Westlink service and didn't have alternatives apart from the car. But we hope it will be for others, not just for commuters. We hope it will be useful for many people, really. It's a simple idea, but it comes out of um, many years of, of working on campaigning and thinking about things and, and researching. The um, leaflets are now going out into the community. Many of the villages have now had a leaflet through their door. So I'm not going to go into great detail about the service. You can get that information from the leaflet. Um, but this is just quickly to show you the places it's going and the times that it's going there. The link at the bottom of the page is a very useful one as it shows you um, the Transpora uh, website where you can see that timetable. But also importantly, you can see this button here that says service disruption. I'm just sharing it with you now. Can everybody see that? I hope so. You can check out if there's a service disruption on the service by going to this particular one. OK, so. Um, just going back to where I was. What we really recommend is that you become a member of this um, service, because then you can pre book your seat a week in advance and you can be sure that you will have a seat on the bus that way but you can just hop on on the day provided there are seats left or standing room left for you to do so really what I wanted to clarify this evening is why are we doing this and to decarbonize transport in the tube valley I think if the project and Baines and Wecker won't reach there aims to decarbonise transport. We need to be part of it. And the evidence of climate change, which is why we want to decarbonise, is everywhere. This is um, seen very recently, only a month ago, within the Chew Valley. 
And transport is a really significant um, supplier or creator of carbon emissions, as these graphs show you. That's nationally, where it's over a quarter, and in Baines, where you know it's even more the percentage of it. The other areas, of course, are important, but if we could make something happen in transport, then it will really make a change. And some people say, well, I'm doing what I can to decarbonize. I do my recycling each week that, you know, I'm doing my bit. But what this graph shows you is that we need to do more than just recycling. We need to take on some of these big players, our domestic um, carbon producing uh, uh, things that we do in our homes, if you like, and things that we do in our work, but also transport. And so our challenge really is why not leave your car at home? And we're kind of right bang on line with um, a recent report that came out about behaviour change that suggested that what people need is to know what to do, to know what behaviour to change and how to change behaviour. And we think this new service is one step towards that, particularly for people who regularly commute to Bristol. If you could take out your commuting journeys from your carbon footprint, that has a significant impact. But there's also other reasons to take this bus. It's very cheap. It's only two pounds for, for each uh, single journey or a pound if you're under 16. You wipe out the need for parking and so there's no parking fees. Generally speaking, it's going to mean there are less um, vehicles on the road. It's a 29-seater plus 11 standing spaces. That's a lot of cars taken off the road. And also it travels in bus lanes, so it, it gets past what congestion there is. And it means that you can spend that journey in a more pleasant way. It might be that you want to read a book or um, do some work or just shut your eyes and have a bit of a rest. And what we've been told as well is that people enjoy the sense of being linked to their community um, and that they want a simple, pragmatic way to reduce their far carbon footprint. And, and this is one way to do it. So um, Jess is going to be talking a bit about exercise to commute. But just to say in the vision of this bus is the idea that it is possible to cycle or e-cycle to one of the stops where the, bu the bus stops. Um, from local villages and we're putting in place some things to, to help people to do that. Um, in terms of where can you do that literally on Monday morning, in Chewstoke there are bike stands already in place um, under the shelter outside the GP practice um, and we've negotiated use of those for this service. We're also considering uh, putting in further ones and we have meetings next week with the GP practice to consider that. So that's your best place for Monday morning if you want to cycle is to Stoke and park it up next to the GP practice. If you're in um, Stowey Sutton, um, really big thanks goes out to the Stowey Sutton Parish Council who've given us 500 pounds of um, SIL money and uh, to Transpora who've matched that and therefore uh, they've been able to go ahead and they have now purchased cycle racks and they will be be putting in place at the end of next week. So uh, from the week beginning of the 15th, uh, that will also be a place where you can park your bike. Chew Magna is the other place where the bus stops and that is more problematic. We are, we've been exploring different options and we haven't give up, given up the idea that we will get um, some cycle racks in there. We've um, had an indication that we may have an initial donation for that, but we need to find match funding. And more importantly, perhaps we need to find somewhere to put those stands. So if you're in Hugh Magna and you've got ideas, uh, do get in touch. The other thing that you can do to get to this route, if you're not actually in one of the three uh, areas where there's a bus stop, is you can order a Westlink. And there's been a lot of changes brought in with Westlink, which Avril will be able to tell you about. Um, some key things to think about are, are the idea of booking together. Um, the idea of our, our three month trial, which has been set up, which makes it a little easier in some areas of the valley to secure a lift. Um, and uh, Avril will be able to say a bit more about the availability of the West Link um, linking into this service uh, when she speaks. So the final thing I wanted to say within this bit is just that for our group, this bus, um, the X91 Chew Valley Sprint West Local, is just the beginning of a journey towards better joined up, 
affordable, useful transport in the Chew Valley. Um, and it is our intention to put in a, a further bid to the next round of um, West Local. Of course, we don't know if we'll be successful, but we're going to do the same as we did last time, which is base whatever design we come up with on uh, data that we collect from within the community. And so we've launched a survey. It's called Imagine the Future. Um, the link is there on, on, on the um, slide, but also um, it's available in paper copy. So we can arrange for you to have a paper copy if you are not able to do it online. And we have been consciously going out into many communities over the last couple of weeks to try to make sure that everyone gets their say. So, uh, so far we've had 147 responses to that questionnaire. We'd love to have more, so please keep them coming. The deadline on that at the moment is set at the 8th of April. It may be that we can extend that and we're going to look into that over the next few days. The final good news is that in terms of the Chew Valley Sprint, we already have 115 signed up members for the scheme and we already have 29 journeys booked across the week next week. So we've made a start. People are already engaging with it and, and that's great news. OK, um, I'm going to pass over now um, to Avril, who's going to talk a little bit about um, her part that she has had to play in this scheme and, and how people can access it. Thanks very much. And to share my screen. All right, is that working? It is, but it's not on presentation mode yet. Is it now? <laughs> no. Working? Lovely. Lovely. Yep. Great. OK, so um, good evening. My name's Avril England. I am a Principal Transport Operations Officer within the West of England Combined Authority. And I've been working with Jackie um, initially on um, West Link and then um, subsequently on um, West Local and also um, the trial of West Link to link in with West Local, which is um, the, the X91 service. So if I talk you through um, the changes we're making to Westlink, these also come in on Monday. So as everyone will be aware, um, we launched with um, our South Zone, which covered everything from North, West, North Somerset in Western Supermare, all the way through to um, Freshford in Bath. Um, that was the whole of the South Zone, um, and we had 16 vehicles. Um, it, it, we did have lots of problems with it, and um, including um, people not being able to book journeys, and also it was better promoted in um, parts of North Somerset, so the demand was there, which meant that people within Baines and the Brist, bits of Bristol were unable to book the, the service. So what we've done is we have split the South Zone into smaller zones, and the Chute Valley now has its own zone. Within that zone, it has um, three shared uh, three shared zones. So that will mean that people within the Chew Valley could travel into Brist Bristol Airport in the airport shared zone, into the Hengrove shared zone, and also into the A37 shared zone. Initially, you will have one vehicle allocated to the Chew Valley and we will monitor the demand and if the demand is there of the 16 vehicles you know you will get more vehicles depending on the the demand so the a38 zone as i said that gives you access to bristol airport on in an interchange with bus services on the a38 the a37 shared zone we've extended that into high littleton and that will allow um, passengers to interchange with bus service five 22, 
which provides onward travel to Bristol, Kent, Midsummer Norton, Radstock, Peasdown, on and in, into Bath. Users will no longer be able to travel directly to Bedminster anymore. But the, we have um, extended the zone, Chew Valley zone, up to Withywood, and that will allow connections onto bus service 75, which will give you onward travel to Bristol City Centre, Filton, and up to Cribs Causeway. Uh, the Hengrove shared zone provides um, access to all of the facilities at Hengrove. So you've got the South Bristol Hospital and also the retail and leisure centres. And also, again, that's provides interchange opportunity with the M1 Metro bus service, which goes from Hengrove to Bedminster, University of the West of England and up to Cribs Causeway. In addition, um, there are new services um, operating on the A37. So you will also have access to um, the 171 from interchange from Westlink, which takes you to Wales. You've got the, the 374, which will take you to Taunton, 375 to Bridgewater, and the 376 and 3768A, sorry, which will take you um, to Street. So, um, as Jackie mentioned, we are trialling um, a Westlink service to link up with the X91. So that will, um, a, an additional vehicle will be allocated for three months to offer a feeder service up to Bishop Sutton so you can pick up the X91 at the start of its journey. So looking at the demand that Jackie has supplied, um, the greatest demand seems to be from residents of Compton Martin and East Hartree, but it will also be available to book from surrounding villages as well. So it's a three month it's a three month trial and it will be bookable from seven o'clock in the morning and that will reach Bishop Sutton for an X91 departure at 7.35. And in the evening the, 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 the vehicle will be available to book again. So you'll be able to get off of the X91 when it returns and then back on to the Westlink to take you back to back to Compton Martin, East Hartree and the surrounding villages. As Jackie said, um, we would recommend that you make a group booking if you're with neighbours or friends within those villages and you can book for up to five people and then that will give you more chance of getting on the vehicle. The other thing to mention is Avon, the Avon Rider ticket, that which is a new feature. So um, that will allow you to have a multi-operator journey. So instead of you having to pay individually for each of your trips, you will be able to purchase that on Westlink and then you will then be able to use that on the X91 Chew Valley Sprint service and any other journeys that you are making on onward travel from centre of Bristol onwards. Um, and just a quick overview on how to book your Westlink journey. So that via the mobile app, and that's downloadable from Android and um, Apple um, app stores. You There is also a web app, and the link is um, in the middle of this slide. And also, if you're unable to use, um, have a smartphone or the internet, you can book over the phone. Oh, we have a call centre and the lines are open from Monday to Saturday. So 5.30 in the morning till 9.30 at night and Sundays and public holidays between nine and six. So we, we do have, um, so the West England Combined Authority has its own travel planning website called Travel West. Um, this will allow you to onward journey plan. It is we are currently working on it being able to manage West Link because at the moment, because West Link is an on demand service, it struggles to be able to journey plan with some with a service that isn't following a fixed line. But we are working on that. But for onward travel, so if you wanted to catch any of the other buses that operate down the A37 or the A38, it will give you all of that information. 
and I think that that's it from me. Thank you. That's great. Thanks very much um, for that, Avril. And hopefully that reassures people that actually, um, if you've had not great experience of wrestling up to now, there's a good deal being done to make it much better going forward. Um, and our group will be monitoring it closely and, and relying on your feedback to, to see if that is working as promised. But to have uh, you know, one more vehicle assigned to our area specifically for this route is fantastic and really gives an opportunity for, for us to start trusting Westlink to get us to, to where we want to be um, and making it possible for everybody to, to access um, this new service of the X91. OK, so um, the next person I'm going to turn to is Jessica Fox Taylor. So um, Jessica, as I said, works within <clears throat> sustainable transport in Baines. Um, and has a particular interest in active travel and how you might be able to use active travel within um, your journey. Uh, and there's a lot of evidence that she will talk about, about why that would be a good thing for all sorts of reasons. So um, over to you now, Jessica. Thank you very much, Jackie. I'm just going to hopefully share my screen and make it go full screen. Uh, hopefully that is showing for everyone now. Lovely. Yep. Thank so you. thank you, Jackie. So yes, I am uh, Jess Fox Taylor. I have been in the council for about 17 years now. Most of that time has been within um, active travel or sustainable transport. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about why we would like you to consider to take active travel on your journey to and from uh, the, uh, the Chew Valley Sprint bus. So um, I hope it's not a surprise to most people here that it's uh, well known that the benefits generally of physical activity, that the um, connections between physical activity and mental as well as physical benefits uh, have been proven many times over. And I've got all of the um, uh, references sources at the end of this as well, if anyone wants to see it. Uh, also, we know that physical activity boosts, boosts productivity in your work day by about 8%. Um, and I'm gonna whiz on through. Uh, Specifically, active travel uh, is, is shown to give um, satisfaction and well-being generally within uh, your day. And the switch from walking to cycling takes about a year to show uh, a, a noticeable increase in subjective well-being. That, again, that's from travelling by car to work to travelling by active travel, specifically walking or cycling. But we've also seen that, that those benefits um, are felt with public transport as well because there's always a certain amount of walking or cycling that you will do to get to public transport. Very specifically um, in the adults commuting travel behaviour over time and well-being a longitudinal study of a British household panel survey that was a bit of a mouthful um, it showed us that there's not only um, a conclusive link between well-being and the mode of travel we choose for commuting but that the well-being increases increases specifically for walking and also that comparatively public transport use is positive compared to car use so we're getting lots and lots of information uh, and evidence that you want to change as much as you can over from a uh, car to other modes of transport um, we know that if you are cycling, for example, that you will um, come across less pollution, you will inhale less pollution because you sit at a higher level than you do when you sit in your car and pollution, uh, the types of pollution that we um, inhale on our journeys are not filtered out by um, our car's filtration systems um, and they sit lower down physically. So we inhale a lot more of them when we drive compared to when we cycle. Um, we've got lots of things that are available to help you consider cycling. So we provide loan bikes. That's bikes that you can um, borrow for uh, up to four weeks, two to four weeks, depending on the type of bike that you're looking for and the, the, the period of time. It is a lot busier in spring and summer, obviously. Uh, they are available from um, a bike shop in Bath. 
They are free uh, to use, but we do ask for um, a deposit to, to secure because the bikes are uh, have a, a, a cost with them. And we do normal bikes, we do folding bikes, we do electric bikes, we do electric folding bikes, and we also have electric cargo bikes. So the deposits that we ask for, which are fully refundable um, at the time that you bring the bike back in good working condition, um, uh, go from £50 for a normal bike all the way up to £200 for an electric cargo bike, which seems like a lot of money, but these bikes are about £6,000 for us to buy. Um, and I, we've been doing this for about nine years and we have never charged somebody. Um, so we've always returned the deposits to them, even in minor cases of, of um, bumps. And if there is uh, a, a rare instance that a, a bicycle is stolen from you, getting a crime reference number means that we can follow it up with our insurance. And again, you get that deposit back. QR code for you there. Um, or, and the information is all through there as well. Uh, we provide cycle training. Uh, we provide cycle training primarily in schools. And we do see that um, active travel is, is a, a whole life activity and also commuting is rarely just done on its own it's very often that commuting is linked in with the journey of dropping off your children to school so i do i am talking to you now about uh, school journeys as well and we do bikeability to school um, uh, which is free if you are on free school meals and we do some limited adult cycle training available as well the qr code here gives you the information to all of the cycle training that we do uh, and if it's adult cycle training that you're after, you go on a wait list and we contact you when there's availability. But we are offering some additional bespoke training through Jackie um, for those people who are in this area and who want to uh, look specifically at the journey uh, to get onto one of the stops uh, that the, the Chew Valley Link bus will take. So get in touch with Jackie if that's something that you're interested. The other thing that we're offering specifically through Jackie in this area is Dr. Bike as well. That's mini um, MOT or mini uh, maintenance testing of your bicycle to make sure that it is uh, up to, to scratch for going on the road. So talking about schools, we work with schools on um, uh, a thing called Mode Shift Stars, which is uh, a national uh, accreditation scheme and looks at all of the things that um, you want to consider when you're looking at transport, active travel. So as well as bikeability, thinking about what they wear. We've done, this is a set of um, photos that we took when we provided an entire module um, of STEM uh, research into um, sustainable transport. So they looked at how they would change a tyre, they looked at general maintenance of the bike and they looked at calorie calculators and journey planning as well. We have in Bath, uh, also in Bristol and in South Gloucestershire, the tier loan bikes, loan scooters and soon to be cargo bikes as well. Um, whilst in the Baines area, they are only in Bath at the minute. At the end of your journey, they're already there in the centre of Bristol and, and the area for Bristol is expanding. We are also committed within the contract with TIA to expand into uh, the Summer Valley. And we've started talks with TIA about the possibility when we get to the Summer Valley about expanding into the Chew Valley as well. So uh, that really depends on the business case, but it is something that they are open to and we are keen to look at that. Those are what we call hop on, hop off. So you um, turn up, you can book for um, uh, 10 minutes, reserve a, a bike or an e-scooter for 10 minutes before you arrive, if you know uh, the location that you're going to take it from. And then it is um, an unlock fee and then pay per minute to use them. The e-scooters only are available on a monthly rental system and that is available for anywhere in the west of England. So if you wanted an e-scooter now to get um, to and from your home to the, the bus stop, you can get in contact with TIA and sign up for a monthly loan scheme. These are all of my references. There's quite a few of them there. Uh, and this is the contacts for you. If you've got any questions, inquiries about the TIA e-bike, that's micromobility. Bikeability uh, courses, um, the left hand QR code gives you that one as well. You can Google loan bikes, Bath loan bikes, or use the top right QR code. And then the bottom QR code, and I'm just going to um, 
come out of this and hopefully share show you a list of things that we have videos that we have around school travel um which was that bottom qr code and this is a wonderful uh list of videos that we've done around the benefits of traveling to school these bottom two they're a little bit old but they are completely up to date now they, they they still apply today and those are videos that we took with parents children and teachers uh, in the Baines area talking specifically about the benefits that they found by walking to school and cycling to school and we also do things like um, guiding people through schools through the process of doing a walking bus as well so we've got lots of resources there for you and lots of resources for schools and for businesses if businesses are looking to support people by doing salary sacrifice schemes so lots of reasons for and lots of help to get you actively traveling to and from the bus stops thank you thanks very much for that jess um and uh i think there's lots of things there that probably are prompting people to think oh what were all those links and where can i connect um what i'd like to suggest is that um if elaine or phil can put our email address into um the chat now chu.valley.sprint at gmail.com. If you would like a copy of the slides from this evening, um, if you'd like further information of any sort, um, please do contact us on that email. Okay, and um, next I'd like to introduce Simon Newport um, from Transpora. And obviously our, our group, the Chu Valley um, Sustainable Transport Group, and the Chew Valley CIC, which is um, uh, the other part of the partnership, that we've been working very, very closely with Transpora throughout this process, um, both before we put in a bid and obviously since making sure that everything is in place. So delighted to have Simon here this evening to just say a little bit about um, the bus. Thank you, Jackie. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, uh, just to say that we've been, you know, uh, really enthralled by the partnership and everything that's been going on and uh, and Jackie in particular has done great at leading leading this bid and and uh, bringing it forward so we say thank you very much to her um yeah we we are the operator uh, and we're all ready to go starting on Monday um as Jackie said we've already got some people already booked on which is brilliant uh but if you're not booked on please do so and um please um contact us by at least by four o'clock on on friday or if not you can actually just board on the day <clears throat> so there's a couple of things just to say um, obviously booking guarantees you a seat um and um yeah booking guarantees you a seat so that's brilliant if not you can pay on the bus and that can be done by cash or contactless um just to check where the vehicle is uh we have an app uh it's called the passenger my trip app and uh, if you follow Transport Southwest, you'll be able to click on something called Live Buses. And that actually shows you in real time where the bus actually is. So that's the best way to find out if the bus is running late or if there's any issues. Um, and really, that's that's about it. We're all ready to go and looking forward to picking everyone up on Monday. Thanks very much for that, Simon. Um, and I should say that Transpora has got experience of taking people to work um, for commuter journeys. So that particular thing has been very useful for us thinking about this particular service. Um, but as I said earlier on, the, um, the bus is not just for commuters. And of course, next week is still in the school holidays. And maybe there will be people among you who will be looking after children next week. Why not have a day out? Why not go in on the Chew Valley Sprint, um, get to Bristol? Maybe you'll go to Hengrove and then you'll think, right, we're going to go up to um, Cribs Causeway, connect to a bus there. Or perhaps you'll go to um, Temple Meads and have a day out in London, get back again. Um, or perhaps you'll go to uh, the Haymarket stop where you can either go to um, into the shopping area in Bristol, have a day there. Or perhaps you might want to um, go, go across to the bus station, make a connection there. If time is on your hands and, and money no object, you could even get yourself onto a bus to take you to Amsterdam for a few days. 
So it's incredible what you can do starting with the Chew Valley uh, Sprint. And we do hope that you will use it as much as you can. Um, we're going to move on to um, questions now for the panel. I know some questions have been answered in the chat as you've gone along, um, but um, I'm going to have a look at the questions in, in the in the Q&A um, and see if we can answer as many of them as we can. Again, any that we don't manage to answer this evening for any reason, um, if you email us at that chew.valley.sprint at gmail.com, we will make sure that we give written replies to anybody who requests them. Jackie, could I just say that we've had a question um, from Chris to say, um, didn't catch the name of the app that you used to track the new bus. Um, maybe Simon, you could just give that detail again. Yeah, that's fine. So it's um, <clears throat> it's it's Passenger who actually run the app. So it's it's the Passenger My Trip app. Um, so you put that in the um, in the um, in your wherever you normally get your apps from your app store. Uh, that should come up. It's it's a yellow it's a yellow icon with an arrow on it, I think. And then um, obviously you just open it up and then you can click on Transport Southwest and something called Live Buses there, and it will show you um, <laughs> and it will show you where 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 we are. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that's the best way to uh, to follow any of the buses because it, it updates in real time. Obviously, goes up to, up to the um, uh, satellites, come back down, and tells 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 us where the bus is. Great. Okay, so um, my trip is what you've got to put into the system, um, and also uh, if you go onto that page that I showed you earlier from my presentation, there was an extra page um, which said about um, the bus service. It was the Transpora website and that has um, your link to, to, to issues there as well. OK, um, let's have a look at the questions. So I'm going to just work through the, the ones in front of me. I don't think. Yeah. OK, so from Chris, hi, thank you very much for the work that's gone into this to make this service go live. It's much appreciated. How lovely. Thank you for saying so. Um, are you worried people will book onto the service but forget to cancel on the day should they no longer use need to use the bus, meaning there'll be pre box seats that aren't being taken? I think that's um, uh, something we have thought about. Uh, and we one of the things that we decided was that if somebody does miss a bus, we will be in touch with them and try to clarify what went wrong, what happened there. Um, and if people you know, persistently don't turn up for booked things, we might suspend their right to book for a little bit. Um, because what we don't want to do, as you say, is have lots and lots of ghost journeys um, particularly as any payment you make for this bus, you, uh, you make on the bus. So uh, your, your booking process confirms your seat and we will hold that seat for you. Um, and then you pay for it when you arrive and, and using whichever method you're going to use, whether that's cash, in which case it's great to bring the exact money, um, or if you've got a concessionary card of some sort or a birthday bus pass, um, or just a debit card you can use. And all of that is detailed in your booking form. So we know what to expect. And the, the bus driver will have a list of the people expected on the bus and will be able to uh, check, check you off. And if you've pre-booked, you'll be invited to come on the bus first. And then if there are remaining places, then people will be invited onto those. Um, I hope that sort of meets that question. Um, so I think this the next question from Tim Waite. Thanks very much for your question. Four years ago, Dundry had two bus services, the 672 and the 55. 55 was cancelled two years ago. 60, 672 was cancelled last year to be replaced with Westlink, allowing us to get to Bristol. Now Westlink no longer allows us to go into Bristol. Um, to really finish this off, the X91 will not stop in Dundry, just go through. Um, and uh can i think that was meant to say can dundry have a usable bus service 
I'm just going to say one thing about that, and then I think I'm going to give this question to you, Avril, and it may be that Simon will come in as well. Um, in terms of where, where the X91 is stopping, it's absolutely based on our research surveys done last year and where demand was seen to be. And Dundry did not appear as high demand in that survey. There is another survey out right now. If you live in Dundry, fill it in, because as well as us using it to consider a, a, another service that we might choose to put on, we're also going to use it to, to look at the X91 and say, have we got that right? Um, and it may be we, we're not quite sure about the parameters of what we can change in terms of our service, but we know there is a potential to make changes in September. Um, and if it was absolutely clear that there was a massive demand in Dundry and that, that it was doable to, to stop at that place without uh, preventing it still being the fast service we want it to be, then that's something we could consider. So you have got some power to potentially um, have that adjustment within the X91, we think, we, we're not absolutely sure. Um, but also, I, I'm going to pass it to Avril for any other comments really about how in the meantime, people from Dundry might choose to um, get into Bristol. Thank you, Jackie. So as um, you correctly said, Dundry is within the, the Chew Valley zone and there will be um, a dedicated um, Westlink vehicle, one initially within the zone. And hopefully if there is the demand, we will have the ability to allocate additional vehicles. Um, we have five zones which used to make up the south zone so we've got five vehicles allocated which means there are 11 vehicles free to roam so th there's a lot of potential for you to get additional westlink vehicles um in terms of getting into bristol um the quickest link would be to go to the shared zone either at hengrove or you're picking up the the 75 in withywood it's um it is unfortunate that the 672 had to come off when we retended last year um our contract prices across the west of england area went up by 46% so unfortunately it meant that our money bought a lot less than it had previously done so between ourselves and Bath and North East Somerset, you know, we did have some very tricky decisions as to what we couldn't couldn't fund and based on patronage there were some serve, supported services within Bath and North East Somerset that were better used so we did continue to support those and obviously although not a replacement Westlink does have the ability to you know to to offer those journeys not within the Chew Valley but also for for onward travel so we we are hopeful that the changes that we are making will provide those links to to residents of the Chew Valley. Thank you, Jackie. Thanks very much for that. I should have also said, um, and I'm sure Jessica would back me up in this, it, although it seems counterintuitive to cycle backwards to Chew Stoke in order to catch the X91, that is also an option. And it might be that, you know, there might be some people in Dundry thinking, I can never, I haven't got time to do any exercise and, and yet they're stressed as anything and they're not getting enough physical or mental stimulation that way. You know, it is an option to cycle if you're somebody who can. Um, and it is an option to, to uh, seek a Westlink back to the X91, should you wish to. But as Avril pointed out, there are other perhaps more logical forward journeys that you'd ask Westlink to take for you. Uh, Jessica, did you want to come in on that? I completely, completely agree, Jackie. Uh, I think one of the benefits the, of um, active travel that we often forget is it's somewhat a free form of physical activity. It's uh, activity that we can we can put into our day that we haven't got to travel to a gym to take. And very often um, we've got not in my list of resources but i but i can certainly find some for you there's evidence out there that it, it really becomes a uh, a buffer between work and home so it is a de-stressing point so the not just the journey because i think we often think that that's the case for for car journeys as well 
but very specifically active travel is even more of a de-stressor and a buffer to separate out that that work from home so there is always a benefit from from it even if it feels like you're going in the wrong direction thanks very much um tim i've noticed your hand is up we're not doing a uh, verbal um responding to questions if you've got more to ask by way of question do please just pop it in the q a's and we'll we'll come to it um the next question out of interest from chris what what was the benefit behind the pre-booking as if there are 29 seats plus 11 standing surely the bus will never be full well we think it could be we have high ambitions as i said we want to decarbonize transport in the chew valley um, and we did a survey, the first survey we ever did back in 2021, revealed that most households in the Chew Valley um, travelled by car to commute. It was uh, overwhelmingly the case. Um, and also that most households um, had two cars and that people travelled as single travellers to their place of work. So potentially those 29 seats is 29 cars coming off the road. And we think that's actually a relatively small ambition in terms of congestion and carbon. Um, and we're ready to consider putting on a second bus if we have too many people. Um, I'm slightly tongue in cheek here because I'm sure we won't fill all 29 seats next week. But the, the bottom line is uh, it takes um, a, a, a kind of leap of imagination to imagine that you might uh, change your habits completely around commuting and, and start using a bus. And if you've never used a bus before, take a look on side the X91. They are so lovely, these buses. Simon can tell us actually, why don't you tell us a bit more about the actual bus um, in terms of its, uh, its uh, low, low carbon and uh, you know, comfort, et cetera. You mean in terms of its loveliness? In terms of its loveliness, yeah. Um, well, yes, they are. They are relatively new vehicles, um, two or three years old. Um, they are. Uh, they are diesel still, uh, but they're Euro six, um, which is the um, the best um, uh, diesel um, engine that there is at the moment. Um, generally, the the uh, carbon and nitrogen particulates that come out of it are very very negligible. Um, and in some cases, it can be cleaner than the air that goes in it, even even uh, even being a diesel engine. So um, yeah, it's um, it's the best the best form of of transport apart from doing it yourself on the bike. I'm afraid. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, another question from Chris. Out of interest, how many people would need to use the bus each day for you to deem this viable stroke a success? Well. This is quite crucial. Um, we have the grant for the first year, that's in the bag as it were. So technically we wouldn't have to t fill a single seat or take a single amount of money for that bus to run for that year. Wouldn't that be a tragedy if that's actually what happened? But that's technically what it is. Um, it, we have this, it's going to be there, let's try and fill it. There is um, the potential um, written into the contract of it being a two year um, funding envelope. That's kind of the expectation in a way, but there is a, a transition we have to cross at the end of the first year and, and indeed right the way through the, the process, we have to be monitored. And one of the things that is going to be really crucial is whether it's being used um, because nobody wants to um, have an empty bus driving around. So, the first time that, that this is going to be looked at is three months into the scheme. So please, if you're umming and ahhing, if you're thinking, oh, I'll wait till other people prove it's OK, please don't do that. Please get on board right now and give us some brilliant stats um, that we can show uh, to West Local to argue the case for going into that second year. The other thing about the West Local bid is they only accepted buses that had the potential to be commercially viable within the two years of the funding. So that's our game plan. We want this to become a commercially viable route. We want it to be the go-to for people commuting to Bristol because it's cleaner, cheaper, easier, 
more pleasant in the community and potentially allows you to do a bit of active travel as well. So please help us recognize that vision and get on board straight away. And if you are getting on board straight away, we're going to be asking you questions about your experience and trying to improve it all along. We've already changed the booking form twice now because people have said, oh, it'd be better if you did this. So we changed it. And that's what we want to do. We want to make this the service that works for you. So please do keep telling us uh, what we need to do. We think it's a success that it's happening. Uh, we think it would be a fabulous success if we fill the bus um, and if we manage to get to that second year and uh, an amazing success if we then manage to keep it going as a commercially viable vehicle beyond that. Um, Avril, I don't know if you want to put in anything from a kind of West of England um, combined authority point of view about the um, what would you deem a success? I know you're not specifically responsible for West Local, but what's your sense of that? Um, well, it's, I mean, the best advice I can give is to, to, to use the bus because the more people that use it, you know, it will become the potential to be com more commercially viable. In terms of the West of England, we are able to support bus services that provide a, a social need um, and which is what you know what we do with the services that we've provided and unfortunately you know the 672 was one but it wasn't very well used but I think now we've got Jackie and your Facebook group and everyone else in the True Valley that's really on board with making this work that is that is the best adver advertisement for it that you know you're out there and you're telling people it's there and working with with Simon and Transpora you know they're they're really behind making this service work as well so you've certainly got you know a brilliant operator behind you so no I think so no no you're doing all the right things and whatever we can do as well to to support you I mean we're we're, the, we're here for you as well the other thing I would say, I noticed on the chat, there was a lovely comment. Um, somebody said, I can see a few of us in the chat live, very close to the, uh, sorry, live very close to Bishop Sutton stop and work at close to Temple Meads, currently doing it by car, could be a game changer, provided we escape work early enough for the bus. So, uh, you know, thinking in that way, thinking creatively, thinking about the people around you. Um, and if you live in one of the nearby villages, actually, why not set up a WhatsApp group that books um, your Westlink so that you, you would negotiate between you who's going to book the Westlink for tomorrow's journey um, and, and you book it through one person, through the app for, with one person. Um, that's what's going to be happening in my village. I really recommend that you set that up in your village if, if you're thinking of, of, of getting there via, via Westlink. And okay. Jackie, um, Jackie, hmm. people... People don't have to do it every day, even if they just choose to do it one or two times a week. It's it's about, you know, just just starting to change the way people feel about things. Thank you for saying that. That's actually really important. And one of the things that we we know. Oh, sorry, you're on mute now, Simon. Were you going to say something else? Did I interrupt you? Sorry. Um, the, one of the things that we know, we've discovered through the survey so far um, so when you sign up as a member, we send you an anonymous questionnaire. So we don't know who you are answering it, but we ask people about their um, work habits within that questionnaire. And what we've discovered already is the number of people who are flexible working, who work from home a couple of days a week, who, who travel in a couple of days a week. That's absolutely fine. You know, you might you might only use this once a week or twice a week that's absolutely fine or you might even only use it once a month when you have to go to that board meeting in London or whatever it is so it can be really really flexible you can also just book um, a, a, an inward journey or a return journey on any particular day so supposing you you were going for that holiday in Amsterdam you know you could you could book your journey in go off on your holiday on Amsterdam having booked your journey back um, you know three days later and the beauty of this service is that fact that you can book the week ahead. So on, uh, on Monday the 8th, for instance, you will be able to book for the whole of the week beginning the 15th. And this week, which uh, because of the bank holiday sort of started on the Tuesday, people have been booking for the whole of next week. Um, and that's the way the booking is set up. So you can sit down and work out when do I need the bus this week? 
book it all in one go um, and get your confirmation, you know, very quickly that that's been set up for you. Um, there's a there's a quest further question from Tim Way. I'm just noticing the time um, and I just want to check with the panel that you can stay on for a couple more minutes just to answer perhaps a couple more questions. Yep. OK, um, so question from Tim Waite is, uh, can you explain how someone who works in Bristol but lives in Dundry can get home after work using public transport? I think that's quite a, a, a useful question to ask is how do you actually manage that in terms of booking your Westlink um, for the for the last bit of the journey, et cetera? So are you able to respond to that one, Avril? Um, yes, of course. Um, so. Um... Westlink um, runs from seven in the morning until seven in the evening. So you can either um, you can book your return journey. What I would say is always allow yourself plenty of time. I mean, obviously not knowing the, the gentleman's working pattern, but um, certainly um, um, you can you can certainly book your your return journey. You can, if you are if you are going to be late or you know you experience any problems, you can always ring the call centre and they you can speak to someone and they can amend the booking. I mean, obviously going through the app, it allows you to 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 cancel the booking and rebook, but through the call centre it can be amended and then you would have the comfort of actually speaking to somebody. But um. I mean, obviously, with all public transport, it it, it, it isn't a given, but it, for if if, for example, West, you know, there was a problem with Westlink, they will always send a taxi. You won't be left stranded as a, a last resort. So I don't want anybody to feel, you know, they would be left somewhere and stuck. But it's just, I think, just basically knowing what time you're getting back on your, your normal service bus. So, for example, if you were catching the, the 75 back from central Bristol to... Um, with you with for interchange with Westlink, just checking what time you're due to get on your bus, what time it's due to arrive. Give yourself an extra five minutes, but then book your your Westlink then to to pick you up. Great, thanks very much for for talking us uh, through that, um, uh, uh, Avril. And I think I think that that goes some way to perhaps answering the next question, which is for Avril. Um, a question for Avril. In the past six months, how many Westlink buses have arrived on time versus late or cancelled? If the aim is for Westlink to get people connecting to other bus routes, I'm sure many people would worry that they'd be left stranded at bus stops waiting for a delayed Westlink bus, or worse still, a call from Westlink saying the bus has been cancelled. This would leave a sharp decline in Westlink users, so would appreciate your thoughts on this. Um, before you answer, Avril, uh, just to say that I, I use Westlink quite a bit. Um, I've certainly had that experience when coming back from Wells um, that I've I've realized that we're not going to arrive um, on the on the 376. We're not going to arrive for the time when I said I would be there for, for Westlink because the 376 has been slightly delayed. I've ca called the, the, the call center. The call center has arranged with the driver to wait until I've arrived. Um, so I think and that's happened to me uh, probably a couple of times that's happened to me and it's been to do with the fixed route bus uh, being slightly delayed. Um, so I would encourage you to use the call centre in that way if you do get into problems. Um, but Avril, the, the question was really for you. So. That's OK. Yeah, again, oh, that, you know, I mean, oh, that's brilliant to hear. And I know that obviously, Jackie, you are a, a firm supporter of, of Westlink and, um, you know, you've experienced its good points and it's, its teething troubles since it's been running for the last year. Um, so I cannot give you it, the details for the Chew Valley, but I can certainly give you those stats um, for the whole of the South Zone. And I'm ha I haven't got it to hand, obviously, but I can find that out and I can let Jackie know and she can pass that information on in terms of journeys, journeys that have been fulfilled, those that have been cancelled, that's absolutely no problem at all. As I said at the start in my presentation, part of the reason why we've had so many problems is because of these lar a large zone and all of the vehicles sort of ended up pooling at 
one end and that where the algorithm for the app works you know it analyzes where the demand is and the more use and demand there is the more that the vehicles are sort of pulled to that location so with you having your own vehicle to start with you know that that is set within the Chew Valley so it won't be being pulled off to Western Supermare or over to um, rural Bath and North East Somerset it will be there so it means that um, it can do those short trips but it also means there's less dead running as well because it's not say for example if somebody did book it in Western but then the next trip was being booked in the Chew Valley there wouldn't be that dead time running all the way back for the driver so he can they'll be able to do more trips within the Chew Valley and more trips quickly so we're going to keep a really close eye on it and hopefully you know the demand will be there and we can put in additional vehicles as well but I'm as I say I'm confident that this is a really good step in the right direction to providing you know a service to each of the, the zones that you know we want to provide and it hasn't been great but i really really hope and believe you know that the changes we're making now are going to make a difference did i answer all the points i think i think you did um the other thing i would say is we do have a facebook group um with over 300 members it's called bus transition in the chew valley um it may be that phil or elaine can be clever and actually put a link in i don't know if you can do that um but um ha have a look on facebook bus transition in the chew valley it's open to anybody who has an interest in traveling in the chew valley um and we do try to be responsive answering questions one of the things that's on there and it's a pinned post is how to complain if you have a problem with westlink so there is a very specific way that we recommend you complain we also regularly meet with avril and her team and we take up issues where we have concerns about them so we we are very um committed to continuing to try to improve westlink we don't think it's perfect um, but we think for a lot of people it has been useful for some people it's been problematic and and we hope that this zone change really does help make it work um and in particular that it works in this linking to the x91 can i add into that jackie as well um like as jackie explained in her example when she was catching the bus back from wells things do happen and no no service and even if you're in your own car you know you you're never immune to you know there being an accident or bad weather or something that delays your journey so i always whenever anybody as I always say, make sure you know you allow enough time to make your journey and for anything that could, you know, go wrong on the way. So, but I'd also say as well, we want to hear about all your good and bad experiences because unless, you know, we hear, then we can't make anything better. But the most important thing is, is if you do have a, comp a complaint or even a compliment, if you could let us know um, the time and the date and as many details as possible, because quite a few complaints that we get are just very general and we cannot then go to the operator and say, please, can you investigate this? And this goes for all of our bus services. So the more information we have on the issue, then we can actually pinpoint what's happening and make it better. You're on mute, Jackie. Sorry, <laughs> bound to do it once in the webinar, wasn't I? Um, there's, there's a question about cycling, but I noticed that it's been very fully answered by Jess within the chat, um, just giving more details about how to access that loan scheme. The other thing that um, Jess mentioned, which is worth finding out whether your employer is signed up to, is the cycle to work scheme, um, the government funded cycle to work scheme. Um, and essentially what that allows you to do is to buy an electric bike or bike across a period of time as a salary sacrifice, which means that it's much, much cheaper way to um, get yourself a decent bike. Um, I, Jess, I don't know if you want to say anything more about that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Jackie. And and that's precisely it. The, the loan bike scheme, as great as it is, um, we could not provide enough bikes to, to get everybody who wants to on a bike for a long period of time. So it is intended as a try before you buy uh, scheme to really understand what 
predominantly, but not it just electric bikes feel like. So that because they are a significant um, investment, people need to understand what it feels like. And so we give them two to four weeks, uh, completely what you want to do. You take it out for the weekend, uh, take it commuting, whatever. We don't make requirements on you on how you use the bike. It's completely up to you. It has puncture repair kit. It has um, uh, pannier bags. It has lights on it as well. So it's everything that you need to to just get on and go. Uh, and the the aim is that, yeah, you will then speak to your employee employer and uh, we have an officer who works with businesses as well, and she can speak to your employer if they don't already have the bike to work scheme. She can talk to them about how to get on the um, bike to work scheme. And that gives you the way it specifically works is that you um, you lease the bike from your employer for a period and then you buy the bike off of them at the end. Um, it is tax free and uh, it is always a lot lot cheaper than it would be to buy the bike because you uh, outright you buy the bike for a reasonable sum at the end which is not the full price that it will be it uh, allows you to include equipment in there and most bike shops now if the bike that you are looking to purchase is above the total um, availability of the bike to work scheme and there are different ones there's a green commuting one as well which is for a slightly different sum um, if the total amount is is above what you're looking for um, quite a few bike shops i know will will um, sell you the battery separately so that it brings the amount down so that you can take it through the salary sacrifice scheme and still get that tax free benefit. And then um, they'll sell, sell you the, the, the battery separately as part of that. So speak to us if you have tried a bike and it works for you and you want us to then do the work speaking to your um, employer about how they can help you. And then we'll also talk to your employer about um, other things in terms of whether they've got uh, bike parking, whether they are doing what they need to in terms of uh, lockers, storage, showers, things like that. And as and when funding becomes available, we have and we will again in the future make sure that we are giving grants to businesses to help them provide those things. Brilliant. Thank you very much. As one of the uh, questioners says, sounds like a brilliant scheme. It does sound like a brilliant scheme. So thank you for that, Jessica. Um, I think I think we've answered the questions in front of us. I just noticed there's one question in the chat, which is about um, when's the form become available. The form is a standard form. You can fill it in any time. First, you have to fill in the, the membership form. Then you will be sent a unique booking number. You then use that booking number to fill in the booking form. Um, and um, you can do that anytime you like. You could send it in at midnight if you wanted to. Callum, who will be processing um, these uh, memberships and bookings, will be there between nine and four, Monday to Friday. So if you are thinking of traveling next Monday, get your booking form, well, get your membership in and then your booking form in tomorrow as early as you can. You could go, go and do it now and it will be there sitting waiting for Callum to process first thing tomorrow morning. Um, so just be aware of that. Don't get caught out by the, the fact that the weekend, you know, after four o'clock on Friday, it can't be processed till Monday at nine. In terms of next week, though, um, we think there'll be spaces you can hop on and I'm sure you would get a seat. But we very much hope that in future weeks that won't be the case because so many people will have booked in advance. OK, um, and when do you find out your book, your space is confirmed? Well, we will try to get back to you within a working day um, as, as much as is humanly possible. That's what will be attempted. I think we've covered the ground. Um, I hope this has been really useful to, to people um, who've attended. Sorry about the slight faffing around at the beginning because I couldn't get in, but I'm, I did in the end. Um, if you've got further questions for us, please do just email us on the address that's been um, put there for the chat. Uh, and yeah, get in touch, get on the bus. Thanks very much for coming.